Okay, so before I launch into my demos, I just want to show you guys what kind of data I'm going to be working with. I'm going to be working with some navigation data. So it's uh, data, uh, electronic navigation chart data, and it's in S57 format. Uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like here in my Windows Explorer first. So notice I have a number of folders here. These all represent tiles of ENC data. All the data is from the San Francisco Bay Area. And I did. Uh, I do have a, the, one of the tiles loaded in the Universal Viewer as well. So you see, there's a, a lot of uh, different layers within this particular tile. This is the 12M tile. I've only turned on the layers that I'm going to be working with during the demo. So we've got uh, most of these uh, dark red points here are the soundings features. We've got some uh, buoy features as well. Uh, three layers of buoy features, and also the lake areas. Okay, so those of you working with GeoDatabase, um, or most of you working with GeoDatabase, will probably have to work with annotation features. Moving annotation from one GeoDatabase to another is pretty straightforward, but as soon as you get involved with other formats, working with annotation does become more complex. Some formats don't even support annotation, and that's the case that we've got here today. S57 does not support annotation. So we're going to be loading the um, sounding points to uh, a sounding feature class, a point feature class, and we're also going to be creating some annotation from our points and loading that to an annotation feature class. Now I already have a geodatabase model in place. I'll show you that right now here in our catalog. I have a file geodatabase here, feature data set called ENC, and within that a number of point, line, and polygon feature classes. So what we're going to load is the sounding features here and the sounding feature anno. And I just want to take a quick look at the properties of the sounding feature anno. And if we look at the uh, annotation classes here, I have set up uh, two annotation classes within here, annotation class one and class two. And then if we look in the annotation tab, I also have a standalone symbol in my symbol collection. So that's what we're going to be working with when we load. So let's create a workspace, an FME workspace from scratch here. And I'm going to start with a blank workspace. And what I'm going to do is add my reader and writer separately. So from the readers menu, we'll add a reader, select the S57 format. And I'm going to load data from one of the tiles in my S57 uh, data set. So we'll load data from that 12, uh, that 12 m tile. So it's dot zero 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 is the extension for S57 files. Now Workbench is scanning and uh, presenting me with the layers in that uh, particular file. I'm only interested in the soundings, so we'll check that on. And the reader side is now taken care of. We'll now go to the Writers menu and add the GeoDatabase Writer, the File GeoDatabase Arc Objects Writer. And we'll pick that file geodatabase that I just showed you guys in our catalog. So that's it there. We'll just hit OK. And uh, Workbench has now asked me if I want to add a new feature type. We don't want this because our table already exists in our geodatabase, so we want to import it onto our canvas. So from the Writer's menu, I'm going to import those two tables, the sounding feature and the sounding feature anno. So I'm just going to put a, feature, a filter in here so I can get to these pretty quickly and select them both. And there's not much transformation we're going to do with the points. Let's just double check which one of these is the actual point. So it's that bottom one, the sounding feature. So I'm just going to move that up here. We'll move the annotation down to the bottom here. I'm just going to connect up the points straight to the point feature class. The transformation we want to do is with the um, is to create some annotation. Now, taking another look at the sounding features in the viewer, I'm going to select one of these points, and I actually want to create the annotation from the depth values um, here on the point features. But if we look at the uh, actual attributes here, there is no depth field. The depth is actually held in the geometry, so notice there is a z coordinate on these point features. So that's what we're going to use um, for our annotation features.
So the first thing we need to do is actually um, extract those coordinates and make them attributes on our point features. And we have a handy transformer called the coordinate fet extractor that will allow us to do that. So we'll join that up and go into the properties of the coordinate extractor. Uh, I'm just going to stick with the defaults here. So we're going to have three new attributes, underscore x, y, and underscore z on our features after the coordinate extractor. The next thing I want to do is actually create my annotation or my labels. The label point replacer does exactly what its name says. It replaces the points with actual labels. If we go into the properties there, there's two things I need to set. One is the label attribute and that's coming from my Z value. And then the label height. Now my data is actually in decimal degrees here, so not the easiest units to work with, but uh, this point zero 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 four will give us a, a decent sized um, annotation. And this is in ground, ground units, of course. Okay, now if I just connected that up now, this workspace would run and it would load annotation using the default annotation class. But you saw that I have uh, a couple of annotation classes and I have a standalone symbol. So what if I wanted to actually change the annotation class I wanted this data to be written with? Now, you guys all know that uh, there's some standard fields on an annotation feature class. You can see them here on the schema. You never work with these attributes directly. You can't do so in ArcGIS and you can't do so in FME either. What you do instead is work with what are called FME format attributes. And to find out where the format attributes are, you'd go to the destination feature type here, the properties of it and there's a Format Attributes tab. If you scroll down, you'll start seeing an, a number of GeoDB underscore Format Attributes. And if you don't know what a Format Attribute is, all they are is they're, they're FME-generated attributes and they hold additional information about the symbology or the structure of your features. So we're interested in this GeoDB Anno class ID to start. So how do you know which GeoDB Anno class ID um, actually goes with the uh, second annotation class um, that we have in our feature class? So let's just go back to our catalog one more time and look at the properties of that sounding feature Anno. A couple of places to grab the number you want to use for that GeoDB Anno class ID. You can either look at the symbol collection here and grab the number there. So I want uh, one for annotation class two or under the subtypes. The subtype, the annotation class ID subtype field has a code of one for annotation class two. So I'm going to load my data with um, that particular class ID. So what I'm going to do is throw an attribute creator down on my canvas. And we'll set up that GeoDB Anno class ID. Give it a value of one. Okay, so if I run this, it will load with that particular annotation class. Now there are other format attributes, or actually lots of geodatabase format attributes you can work with. So going back to my format attributes tab, notice all of the GeoDB font format attributes available to you. The other thing I'm going to do is change up the font name. Uh, currently that annotation class is a Times New Roman font. So it's perfectly valid for me to actually go in and uh, modify the font for this annotation class by simply setting that particular format attribute and we'll change it up to an Arial font. Okay, so I'm going to run this workspace now and uh, go ahead and load both of these few classes. All right, so now let's go back to our catalog here and uh, just do a quick refresh. Okay, I'll have to zoom in a little bit here. And what we should see are some annotation features with an Arial font. And remember, annotation, uh, second annotation class um, uh, was in red. So pretty confident here with that we loaded with the correct, um, with what we expected. Okay, and symbol IDs work very similarly to annotation class IDs. So again, you'd grab the symbol number from the symbol collection, so this happens to be two. And in order to load with a particular symbol, back in the attribute creator, I would just uh, delete these two here, and I would set up the GeoDB symbol ID. And that would be two, and if I ran this workspace again, 
Um, of course, I'd want to do a truncate and load. So in order to truncate a table, you'd need to go into the destination, feature type properties, format parameters, and you can truncate your table there if you need to reload it. I won't run that again. Um, just wanting to show you guys how to work with a particular symbol from the symbol collection is with that particular format attribute. Okay, so I just want to review what I did. Uh, the key thing to know when working with annotation is to never try to write directly to those annotation fields you see on the schema. Always use the GeoDB format attributes. If you want to reference the GeoDB Anno class ID, you can go into our catalog and use the uh, subtype code or code from the symbol collection, and you reference the GeoDB symbol ID using the symbol ID found in the symbol collection. So that was just a small taste of what you can do with um, annotation inside of FME. Um, FME does also support many other annotation features. These include things like simple leader lines, multi-part annotation, and feature-linked annotation. Feature-linked annotation is quite common, and it's very easy to work with inside of FME. Um, the key there is you need to make sure you've set up your feature-linked annotation classes inside of your geodatabase first. And then with FME, you simply write to the main feature class or the spatial feature class, and then the geodatabase handles populating the annotation and the relationship classes.